So we begin today with Nancy Pelosi. She has left Taiwan after making the first visit to the island by a Speaker of the U.S. House of Representatives for 25 years. Her trip sparked a fresh dispute between Washington and Beijing. And of course, ties were already strained even before she landed. While in Taipei, Pelosi held talks with President Tsai Ing-wen, and she was also given a special award. Taiwan is a reliable and trustworthy cooperative partner of the United States. We will continue to work with the U.S. Congress as well as administration to strengthen cooperation in areas such as Indo-Pacific, security economic development, talent, cultivation and supply chain so as to further elevate Taiwan-U.S. relations. I welcome Speaker Pelosi and delegation to Taiwan. Thank you for taking concrete actions to show your strong support for Taiwan at this critical moment and for expressing the U.S.'s consistent policy supporting Taiwan's self-defense. Taiwan has been an island of resilience in the world. Indeed, the people of Taiwan have proven to the world that with hope, courage and determination, it is possible to build a peaceful and prosperous future, even in terms of the challenges you face. And now, more than ever, America's solidarity with Taiwan is crucial, and that is the message we are bringing here today. Today, the world faces a choice between democracy and autocracy. America's determination to preserve democracy here in Taiwan and around the world remains ironclad. Pelosi also met with human rights activists in a closed-door session since Pelosi's potential pit stop in Taiwan was first mooted earlier this year. Beijing has signaled its anger about a top U.S. politician, second in line for the presidency, visiting the island. While in Cambodia for the ASEAN summit, Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi said anybody who offends China will be punished. This is an out-and-out -out farce. The United States is violating China's sovereignty under the guise of so-called democracy. Those who play with fire will not come to a good end, and those who offend China will be punished. Shortly after Pelosi's arrival, China announced a series of live-fire military drills in the air and sea around the island. Taiwan has condemned the military exercises. China's announcement on its drills in six areas around Taiwan, including the southwest, east and southeast, between August 4 to August 7, are equal to sea and air blockades. Such an act covers our country's territory and sea territory. It has severely infringed our country's territorial sovereignty and violated the regulations related with the United Nations Maritime Conventions. Our country is severely condemning such acts. Meanwhile, the United States and Indonesian militaries have begun their annual joint combat exercises on the island of Sumatra. Other partner nations joined for the first time, signaling stronger ties amid growing maritime activity by China in the Indo-Pacific region. More than 5,000 troops from the US, Indonesia, Australia, Japan and Singapore are participating in this year's exercises, making them the largest since the drills began in 2009. And so we cross live to Weon's U.S. correspondent, Susan Terrani, who is joining us live today uh, from New York City. Uh, Susan, Nancy Pelosi has now been to Taiwan. She's left Taiwan. Uh, the Chinese continue to threaten further reprisals. For Washington now, this must be a game of simply watching and waiting to see just how far China decides to go. Yeah, absolutely. And it seems that the stakes are a lot higher for Taiwan. These military exercises on the part of Beijing are really happening after Nancy Pelosi departs. But, you know, one miscalculation and really things can get out of hand during these military exercises. And the last time that we saw something like this happen was back in 1995 and we saw a mass redeployment and deployment of U.S. military troops uh, move towards Taiwan and Beijing 
towards the Taiwan Strait. So everyone's hoping that something like that won't happen. Um, many here are saying that uh, Beijing is really saber rattling, taking this to the next level. This wasn't something that uh, should have really, um, you know, caused so much drama and controversy. Other members of Congress had already visited uh, Taiwan. Uh, but, you know, the significance of Nancy Pelosi is that she was a high ranking official, the highest perhaps in 25 years. Uh, and, and, you know, this is it's it's a game of, as you said, you know, waiting on the one hand, but on the other hand, Xi Jinping couldn't really sit around uh, and, and watch something like this happen because of the issues that he's facing at home as well. He has a domestic audience that he has to satisfy as well. Susan, it was notable that despite obvious White House unease about this trip, uh, both uh, parties in Congress, lawmakers across the aisle, uh, came together while she was in Taiwan to sign on to a statement approving her visit there. She then wrote an op-ed that's been published in the New York Times uh, in which she says, uh, we must stand by Taiwan, which is an island of resilience. America stands with Taiwan, our democratic partner, as it defends itself and its freedom. Now, the White House got into a bit of a jam yesterday trying to explain what she meant by America stands with Taiwan because, uh, you know, there are questions about whether that claim was almost walking right up to the point of recognizing Taiwanese independence. Yeah, that's um, one aspect of it. Uh, and a lot of uh, analysts here are saying right now that, um, you know, because of Beijing's saber rattling and because Beijing has been so aggressive, whether or not the United States should perhaps change this policy that has been going on for the last 50 years uh, and, uh, you know, move away from that policy of strategic ambiguity and whether or not uh, President Biden intentionally or not recognized that when he made those so-called gaps and said that the United States would go and defend Taiwan. So, um, you know, that's a conversation that's ongoing right now. But the White House is being very careful in, um, you know, making statements like that.